So today I'm talking about a Toyota with the C1241 code, what it is and how you go about fixing it. And so what is a Toyota C1241 code? Well, it's a low battery positive voltage or abnormal high battery positive voltage. And so what does this mean? Well, there's a computer module called the skid control ECU, which basically receives inputs from different sensors, wheel speed sensors, the brake pedal, things like this. And it can adjust the way the brakes are being pressed. This helps the driver maintain the vehicle when there's less than ideal road conditions. So for example, if it's raining and the wheels start to skid, it can help straighten out the tires and basically help the driver control the vehicle. And when you're getting a C1241 code, for some reason, the power going to the skid control ECU is dropped too low. It's not correct. And so it's going to have to be troubleshooting. Know why? And when you get this code, very likely you're going to have a lot of lights on your dashboard. You're going to have like ABS lights, traction control lights, things like this. That's very common. And so what would be some possible causes? Well, the first thing that could cause this is going to be a bad battery or bad terminals that are on the battery. It could be a bad alternator. The alternator might not be charging anymore. There might be an issue there. There could be some kind of issue in the wiring or there might be a blown fuse or something along these lines. And it's also possible that the skid control ECU has gone bad, but this is fairly rare. Usually it's gonna be something going on with the power supply going to the ECU. And so how would you troubleshoot a C1241 code? Well, the first thing to do is get a multimeter and you're gonna to wanna to check the battery and then you're gonna to wanna to check the alternator when the vehicle's running. This is really easy to do. You can use any low cost multimeter, any 10, $20 multimeter is gonna work. You basically just set it to DC voltage. You put the leads on the battery and when the engine's not running, that battery should be like 12.30 up to like 12.95 or something along those lines. It definitely shouldn't be below 12 volts. And then what you do is you start the vehicle and when you start it, the alternator will start charging. And at that point, you should be reading right around 14 volts. A good alternator should be putting out at least 13 and a half volts, up to around 14 and a half volts. You can always check what your alternator is rated for to know for sure, but it should be putting out at least 13 and a half volts. If it's too high, that can also be a problem. So if it's like over 15 volts or something like that, then that's also an issue. That's called overcharging. So there's also a problem with the alternator there, or more specifically, the voltage regulator. But basically with the engine running, it should be at at least 13 and a half volts. If it's not at at least 13 and a half volts, then there's something going on with that alternator. Either it's failed or the wiring going to it. There's some kind of issue going on. So you're going to want to go check that out. You can also do more tests on the battery to be sure that it's good. There's some good YouTube videos on that. If you take the battery to an automotive store like AutoZone or Riley's or something like that, quite often they'll test it for free. They'll put it on a charger. They'll test it and be sure that's working. So there's some different ways to be sure that the battery's good. But the first thing to do is test the battery, be sure it's good, and then test that alternator output and be sure that it's good. If that all looks good, then they're very likely it's going to be some kind of problem in the wiring or a bad fuse or something along these lines. There'll be wiring connectors and a harness going to the skid control ECU. You can check that and be sure that it's all plugged in good. There's also tests that could be done on the wiring to check for voltages and things like this. It's going to vary and depend on the Toyota where that skid control ECU is located. You have to get a diagram for your specific Toyota to know for sure where they're all laid out and things like this. But if you test that battery and it's good, the cables are good, you test the alternator output and it's good, then the next thing is going to be to start checking the wiring. And so that's basically it. I just want to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a Toyota with the C1241 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me. I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you. Please click like. Please click subscribe. And have a good day.